Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of E-Electric Productions. I'm Jay and today we're going to be taking a look at Raiden 5. Raiden 5 is a game for people who love classic vertical shoot 'em ups If you're not a fan of the genre then I wish you a wonderful day and kindly recommend moving on now as you will not find anything of draw for you here save for the phenomenal soundtrack. The Raiden series kicked off in the very early 90s and has spawned six main iterations since that time spread across all main consoles, PCs and even mobile. While mostly unchanged, the series has always boasted good content and an enjoyable experience for fans of the genre. While the early games were more traditional in their shoot 'em up goodness, the later entries in the series have dabbled and danced back and forth between traditional and bullet hell stylings, with 4 and 5 fully crossing the line into the curtain shooter arena. As such, the hitboxes for the ship are much smaller than the ships themselves, giving the illusion at times that you've been hit only to not receive any damage. This mechanic, mixed with the newly touted shield system, make for a more forgiving feeling than one might imagine just from watching gameplay. Make no mistake though, this game is a tough as nails shooter even on the normal setting. The game opens to a forgettable intro video, prefacing the even more forgettable story. The menu screen reveals a few options for choosing, the actual menu items are sparse in their offerings with no graphical options, save for windowed mode where you can choose your own resolution or the fixed resolution of full screen. I know this is just a preference on my part, but I really wish there had been an option to change the width of the affixed side margins. I fully understand that the arcade cabinet aspect ratio was the desired result here, but I would have preferred to have been able to position and thus stretch the image to my desired custom ratio, if anything just to alleviate the sometimes claustrophobic feeling of the game. This personal preference and nitpick aside, the rest of the game options are serviceable, with two noted options of being able to increase the health of your ship and additional bomb payload. There is an art gallery as well with unlockables to pursue, but I would be lying if I said that it didn't feel half-baked and tacked on, as the images are only serviceable if not on the dull side, and the quantity is sorely lacking compared to other shoot 'em ups who offer art galleries of their own. But you didn't buy this game for the menus or the art gallery, you bought it for the white-knuckled sweat-inducing gameplay, and there are two methods here for you to receive your fix by. Method 1 is the traditional mission mode, which has branching paths and eight multi-stage locations. This story mode is the meat of the game, but there is a second boss rush mode if you feel like eschewing the plethora of minions and jabbering of the story's cardboard characters. There are a ton of bosses on display here, and it makes for some fun practice or straight up recreational gaming that will conform to any gamer's time budget. However, as we make our way back into the main game mode, we quickly discover a diverse ship and weapon screen where we can choose from three distinct aircraft and nine varied weapon systems with different and sometimes opposing strategic offerings. One quick note here, while the aircraft are all interesting and fun options in their own rights, I found that I had to end up opting for the craft with the highest movement speed, as the other two felt far too sluggish for a game where reaction and movement speed is everything. After a little reading up on the weapons, you settle in on three that can be swapped in-game by collecting matching colored gems. Upon launching, we are given a screen full of text with congruent spoken dialogue before being loosed upon our enemies to wreak all manners of havoc. As I've already alluded to, the story is quite painful without any real emotional or captivating arc on display. This generic and subpar offering is matched by equally unenthusiastic voice work, and while I appreciate the effort, and there is a lot of dialogue here, it leaves you at most times feeling trapped, eavesdropping on a conversation that you would much prefer to mute, and thankfully you can. There's a much more important reason to mute the forgettable chatter, and that's for the fantastic soundtrack that will burrow its way inside your head and help fully draw you into the on-screen action and further race your already rapid beating heart. There are a few game mechanics that I want to hit on really quickly here. One are the medals, which help boost your score and overall rating. These can be rapidly drawn to your ship and collected if you lay off firing for a couple of seconds. Now this adds a strategic mini-game to the already chaotic mix, encouraging the player to watch for or anticipate quick pauses in the action, where you can afford to cool your guns and gather medals. There's also the weapon system itself, which is not the choice I would have gone for, but you can only switch from your previously chosen arsenal of three weapons by collecting one of the gems that drops from a random enemy on the screen. This makes whatever color you pick up your new primary and sole weapon till you gather another gem. As you collect these gems, you're also powering up your corresponding colored weapon one rank at a time till you cap off that weapon at level 10. I believe that the game would have been more accessible and strategic if you could have just toggled between your three picked weapon systems on the fly and simply powered them up with a colored gem system. Another note here is the sidebars on the left and the right of the screen, which can be scrolled through with the press of a button, providing various information at your disposal. 
Finally, I wanted to further elaborate on the new shield system that retires the old live system seen in previous titles. This shield will absorb varying damage depending on the source, but leave you unscathed, save for a momentary flashing effect alerting you to aforementioned damage. That's pretty much it. At this point, you'll work your way through the game, learning where the game throws cheap shots at you like enemies emerging from an overpass behind you and surprise blasting you in the back. You'll continue to sharpen your reflexes and borderline precognitions. The entire game can be beaten on a good run and around the two hour mark. But with most games of this type, replay value is tantamount to the endless play options of a pinball machine, where you can always chase high scores and the bettering of one's own skill set. So that brings us to the price and a recommendation or lack thereof. As far as price goes, I would say the sweet spot for the average gamer is $12 to $15, which would infer waiting for a sale. If you are truly a connoisseur of the shoot 'em up genre, then you may be able to bear the weight of the now $30 entry price. $35 after the initial launch sale, with no regret and near endless return on said investment. For those of you who are simply not fans of these types of games, just wait for the soundtrack to become available, and watch a friend play while maybe hopping in on a little couch co-op while you're at it. If you're wondering why I'm wrapping up without mentioning the new cheer system where you can cheer other players' accomplishments and receive same cheers, eventually enabling a special fire mode or support, it's because I find it annoying and a complete throwaway. So finally, to give this game a grade, I personally would rate this a B-. It's a good game mechanically, musically, graphically, and in potential longevity. However, the story is intrusive as it attempts to force itself upon you with subpar voice acting. I don't care for the weapon switching system or the obnoxious cheer system. I could nitpick the sidebars on the screen and the tacked on art gallery, but those are really overshadowed by the boss mode, the game's branching paths, and the overall art direction. For me to give this a B- as someone who's not really a fan of the vertical shooter genre is really quite high praise, actually. So that's going to do it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and it informed you or entertained you in some way. And I look forward to seeing all of you on the next episode of Electric Productions. Game on, everyone.